Yeah, but one of our brothers is really taking issue with, you know, people talking about Vice President Kamala Harris based on what's happening in his family. Let's go ahead and check that out. I'm watching Kamala Harris' uh, election campaign thing, and I just feel like, let me just say this to everybody out there who who, who uh, voted for Kamala Harris. I think y'all stupid as the Stupid as a She talk about the one thing they go off on is the reproductive rights. Who's in office right now? If Donald Trump changed it when he was in office, it been three years. You ain't changed it yet, but you running off of that? You ran off of it last time. You ran off of uh, giving jobs last time. Who got these jobs? You count DoorDash and 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 it's who got these jobs that y'all talk about everybody been getting? Cause my mom, my sister, my brother, all of them moved out their house. All of them have moved out their house to move in apartments because it's cheaper. So under this administration that y'all claim y'all love and she's so good for the country, why haven't they done what they plan on doing three years ago? Why they ain't do it yet? Yet they have yet to do anything. They still coming up with these same talking points and you stupid are still buying into the same dumb they said last time. You stupid. I feel that brother 2000% because even the low skill jobs that some black people used to get, that's, that's not be becoming available. Anymore. I had watched a video recently on TikTok where a, a, a black woman walk into a Popeyes and say, What happened to all the black people in Popeyes? Because usually it'd be a lot of black people working in Popeyes. That's the bottom line, it would be. And it was no black people in that particular Popeyes. And it was talking about it was in a black area too, and no black people. So black people can't even go get those jobs anymore, those low skilled jobs. That's what he's talking about. Um, the, the housing prices and all of that, you know, some people, even apartments, even if you're renting apartments, rent is costing just as much as someone paying a mortgage now. I mean, it, it, it's ridiculous. And you have to look at it like this. Are you better off financially today than what you were last administration before this administration came in? That's how you have to look at that. But unfortunately, uh, uh, brother, there are people in our community that is going to vote on emotion, going to vote on color, going to vote on gender, want to see the first and all that. They, they don't care about nothing else. And they're the kind of people, unfortunately, will be crying when they're in the thick of it, crying and, and, and lamenting about their particular vote. That's the sad part about our community. We are one of the most emotional people ever. I've never seen a group of people as emotional as the black community. Uh, it, it amazes me that level of emotion. I tell black people the day you get free of that kind of emotion. And when I mean emotion, I'm not saying don't be human. That's not what I'm saying. What I mean by emotion is that this emotional attachment to political parties, especially the Democrat party, the emotional attachment to symbolism, that's emotion. You have to remove all emotion from that. Why should I pick somebody just because of they, my color, why? That doesn't make sense. No, if I'm going to pick somebody, I'm going to make sure they the right person because we have picked plenty of people our color, right? And guess what we got? The super mayor, Tiffany Henyard. That's what we got. Picking somebody our color just because she a black woman and you want to see the first. Y'all tried that with Tiffany Henyard out there in Dalton, Illinois, and see what she did. Instead of picking the right person. I'm not saying a, a black woman can't be the right person. But y'all always just pick people on color. Don't look at character. Don't look at policies. You know what I'm saying? And this, the policies of Vice President Kamala Harris, it's just, I can't get down with it. it you know, for me, I'm just talking about my personal, I'm talking about my, me, personal. Her views on the economy, her views on immigration, her views on business, no. Then this promotion of unaliving our children, this is she's promoting in our community? No. Uh-uh. No, 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 no. She, she, she doesn't have a clue. She don't have a clue. <laughs> That's why they don't let her talk.
Because you start talking, you're going to start, like, you know, like they say, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. And what's going to come out of her heart, people know, the Democrats know, don't let her talk. Don't you dare let her talk. Keep her quiet. And that's just really what it is. I really don't trust somebody that can't talk for themselves on top of that. You don't need handlers. You can talk on your own. Where's her press conference? She won't do one. Why? Because if she starts talking... Everything will go get unraveled. See, all that that excitement about her, that's so manufactured. It's manufactured. It's manufactured hype. It's manufactured through ads, through influencers, uh, through all kinds of things they're doing. It's just all it's, it's all smoke and mirrors, basically, like the Wizard of Oz. Smoke and mirrors with her. But if she comes from behind that curtain, and you're like, huh, that's the same person that we was, oh, my God, to? You're going to see it. She's going to come from behind that curtain. She's going to have to. And then y'all gonna be like, well, what happened to the great Wizard of Oz? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm saying you will see it, it, it's going to happen much sooner than later. But yeah, and all the brothers and sisters that have been speaking about this, you know, you'll be vindicated. Trust me.